Right, with Hashem's help, we will learn today Yivamis Dafnun Tes. We left off yesterday Dafnun Tes Amadalev by the Mishnah. So continues the Mishnah teaching us the unique, the special dinim that the Koyen Gadol has, i.e. the restrictions that he has regarding whom he can marry. Says the Mishnah, Koyen Gadol, Lo Yisa Almana, a Koyen Gadol is not allowed to marry a widow. So says the Mishnah, says the Tanakama, and as we'll see later in the Gemara from Abraisa, that the Tanakama is the opinion of Rabbi Meir, that this goes bain min ha'edesin, bain almana min ha That the almana is not only if she was married with nesuyim to another man and he died, can this woman no longer marry an Akain Gadol, but that's even if she is an almana, only from being engaged to another man and that man died. Another din, says the Mishnah, that Velo Yisa es as we explained yesterday, that a woman, a girl, is called a katana until she turns both 12 years old and one day, and she starts to physically mature by developing at least two bodily hairs. At that moment, she's no longer called a katana, she's called a na'ara, and she remains a na'ara, a maiden, some type of phase that's in between a minor and an adult for six months. From six months and onward, she's called a boigeres, a fully mature woman. Now, a woman who is a boigeres physically starts to lose her psulim, starts to, to lose, the, lose her hemen, not because she was with another man, but simply because of her getting older. And being that the Torah says that he ha a Kohen Gadol has to marry a Psula, says the Tanakama, that excludes him from marrying a Brigettus. However, Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Shimon argue with the Tanakama, argue with Rabbi Meir, and they hold that Machshirin be Brigettus, that a Kohen Gadol is allowed to marry Lechatchila a Brigettus, concludes the Mishnah. And as we'll see in Mirz Hashem later, Dafnun Tesamut Beis, that there are two ways of understanding the final line of the Mishnah. Either that, the fi that this line goes only, it's a continuation of Rabbi Yelazan and Rabbi Shimon, and there are other Tanoim that disagree with it, and that will talk be the Maskana. But you can also learn now that this final line is Lukula Alma, is according to everyone. That Velogisa es Mukas Eitz, that a Kohen Gadol is not a marry a woman, that's called a Mukas Eitz. A Mukas Eitz means that if a woman had accidentally some type of wound in in her private parts, that that wound or that stick made her lose the virginity. So this Tana, or all of the Tanoim are saying that a Kohen Gadol is not a marry her as well because she's no longer Absol. Okay, begins the Mishnah. Tana Rabbanu we learned in Abraisa that Almana Yikach, that when it says in the Torah that a Kohen Gadol is not allowed to marry a widow, that refers Bein Almana Min Ho'edesin, Bein Almana Min Hanasoyim, so ask the Gemara on the Braisa and likewise on the Mishnah, Pshita. An Almana is an Almana. So says the Gemara, no. Maho, the Tema, one might have thought, Lelef, Almana, Almana, Mitamar. That the Torah uses the word Almana the first time by the story of Yehuda and Tamar. Tamar became an Almana twice. She was married to Eid and he died. She was married to Einan and Einan died. And Mala Halon, at the, that the Torah calls her Shvi Almana Beis Avich. The Torah calls Tamar an Almana. And there she was an Almana from marriage. So maybe Afkan and Hanasuyim, one might have thought that when the Torah says Almana Leikach, it refers to an Almana from marriage. Komash Malan. So therefore the Tana of the Braisa, the Tana of the Mishnah, needed to tell us that that's not correct. Now, Bachlal, there's a rule called Ein Lemedim Mikoidim Matan Torah. And many people can ask, how can we learn Almana and the Havamina? From Tamar, the story of Tamar was before Matan Torah. And the answer is, is that we're not learning a din from something that happened before Matan Torah. We are simply clarifying the meaning of the word Almana that the Torah writes. And when it comes to a Gili Das, when it comes to a clarification, then absolutely we use any part of the Torah that uses once a word and we know there what that word means, and we could apply that meaning to any other part in the Torah where the Torah uses the same word, almana, almana. So now the Gemara asks, well, if that's the case, 
And the Tzadik uses the word almana for the first time from a story where a woman was widowed from marriage. Maybe that is the meaning here by a Kohen Gadol. Answers the Gemara, Dumya de Grusha. That, that we want to compare the restriction on the Kohen Gadol to marry an almana, that that should be similar to his restriction or to the restriction of any Kohen to marry a Grusha, a divorced woman. Ma Grusha, Bein Mino Nisuin, Bein Mino Edison. Just like when it comes to the restriction, to the prohibition of a Kayin and a Kayin Gadol, marrying a divorced woman, there it doesn't make a difference if she's divorced from marriage or even if she's only divorced from an engagement. So Afal Mana, likewise we make a Hekish to, uh, to, to the, applying the same rule by a widow, Bein Meno Edison and Bein Meno So it comes along Taisvis and we has a point over here. First of all, Gerusha itself, why don't we say that when the Torah says that a Kohen cannot marry a Gerusha, it only means Gerusha min Hanasuim. And we should learn Gerusha from Almana. Why are we learning Almana from Gerusha? So Torah's answers that whenever there are two options in how to make a Hekish, these are the words of Torah's, the third Torah's, V'yesh Leymar, de lechumra makshinan. When it comes to a Hekish, when it comes to Yisurei Daraisa, you use the Hekish in the more Chamerdika way. All right. Good. Continues the Gemara. The Loyisa, quoting the Mishnah as Habay Geras, the Tanakama, hold that a Kohen Gadol cannot marry, imagine, a, 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 a woman when she's 12 and a half years old and older. So Tan Rabbanan, we learned in the Braisa, it says in the Pasik Vuhu that he, meaning the Kohen Gadol, Isha Bivisoleha Yikach. Prat says the, the Tano that that comes to exclude Le Boigeres, that excludes the Kohen Gadol being allowed to marry a girl that's already a Boigeres, Shekalula Psuleha, because some of her Psulim, because of her age, already began to go away. And these are the words of Rabbi Meir, which is how we know that the Tanakama of our Mishnah is the opinion of Rabbi Meir. However, Rabbi Elazan and Rabbi Shimon, Mach Shimon de Boigeres, they, they allow the Kohen Gadol to marry a Boigeres, the end of the Braisa asks the Gemara, Bemai Komifliki, what is their argument contingent upon? And the Gemara is going to say that their Machlaikis is based on the understanding of the words in the Pasik. Rabbi Meir Savar, Rabbi Meir holds that the Torah could have written, Vuhu Isha Psula Yikach. But the Torah writes, Vuhu Isha Bivisuleha. There is actually two extra words, two extra letters in this Pasik. From psula to bisuleha, and then from bisuleha to bivisuleha, the double base. So let's begin inside. If the title would have written bisula, that a kohen gadol has to marry a virgin, then we would have thought afilu mixas psula mashma. Then we would have thought that he would be allowed to marry a woman, even if she's a brigadis, as long as she has some of her psulim. However, now that the Torah added an extra letter, the Yud, and it says Bisuleha, so the extra letter is to add to the restriction. Ah, the Ika call Absulam. So that's a Chumrah that he has to marry a woman that has all of her Psulam intact, and that has to do with age as well. And therefore, it has to be a very young woman. Now, why did the Torah add the extra base Bivisuleha? So Bivisuleha is to teach you. That bikedarka in this is already a leniency. That what is a woman who's considered a woman who has lost her virginity? That's a woman who had a act of cohabitation with a man kedarka in the usual way. But if a woman had a relation with a man shaloi kedarka, so that loy that does not make her considered a woman who lost her psulim, and a kohen gadol will be allowed to marry her. In other words, Rabbi Meir is Machmer and Mekel. Rabbi Meir is Machmer that the Psulim have to be fully intact, and therefore you cannot marry a Begeris. But he's Mekel that he, the Kohen Gadol is allowed to marry a woman that had Bia, Shalai Kedarka, with another man. Now comes along, Rabbi, Rabbi Yelazan and Rabbi Shimon hold Mamish the opposite. They hold that had the Torah written Psulam without the extra Yud, then I would have thought Psulam means Shlema. And now, and the Torah added a Yud to be lenient. Bisuleha is va'afilu mixas psulim. We can be lenient that only by mixas psulim. 
And now, according to Rabbi Lozan and Rabbi Shimon, the extra base now is giving a chumrah. That Achi you call Bisuleo Kayomen. That Bivisuleo comes to tell you that if she had any type of relation with another man, Bain Kedarko, and even Shalai Kedarko, then a Kohen Godel is not allowed to marry her. So Rabbi Lozan and Rabbi Shimon, they are Machmer when it comes to the din of Baigeris. But they're make, I'm sorry, they're make when it comes to a Baigeris, that a Kohen Godel could marry a Baigeris, but they're Machmer. And they consider a bia, shaloi kedarka, a bia that makes this woman considered a bo'ula and no longer a psula, period. Okay, now, Amar Rav Yehud Amar Rav, Rav Yehud says in the name of Rav, that nivhalo, nivhalo shaloi kedarka, that if a woman has a bia, shaloi kedarka, psula lekohuna, and Rav meant lekohuna gedoyla. She becomes disqualified to kohuna gedoyla. Seemingly, who does he learn like? He learns like Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon. That whole, that Bia, Shulay Kedarka, the Khumra, <coughs> makes her considered a no longer Sula. So ask the Gemara, Masiv Rav against Rav. It says, Veloi Siyali Isha, there's a din in the Torah that speaks about a woman who, God forbid, gets raped. And Anusa. Over there, if the woman who got raped, or if she was a minor, if her father desires the man who did it to marry her or to marry the daughter, if that were to be the case, parenthetically, it's difficult for us to understand this, but we have to also acknowledge that there are many societies in which a woman who, God forbid, gets raped will be a woman will have a very hard time getting married. Also important to know that many times women get raped by men who are in their social circle. So it's not so, it's complicated, it's not so simple. And there would be times where the woman who got raped would prefer to marry him than to live a life with the stigma of a raped woman who no one will want to marry. In any event, this parsha, just to clarify, this pasik is referring to a case where she wants to get married. So over there, whether he wants or not, there's an obligation for the man who raped the woman for him to marry her, and he's never allowed to divorce her. It says, V'loi siya le'isha. So it says in Ebraisa, when it says, V'loi si isha, it's only Be'isha haru'u yaloi. The Ebraisa says, that's only if the woman is a woman who halachically is allowed to marry him. And Prat, that comes to exclude, an almana to a kain gadol. I mean, this is just all theoretical, a kain gadol. But if a kain gadol rapes an almana, over there, he's not allowed to marry her. Because she's already prohibited to him, because she's an almana, he's a kain gadol. Or Gerusha v'chalutza l'kain had yid. That's the end of the price. So that would be Anissa Psula. Baruch Atoadi, no, Yilhenu, Yilhenu, So ask the Gemara the following. Hey, Chidami, what are we speaking about? Ilayma be Kedarko. If this woman was raped Kedarko, then my idiom is Shum Almanon. Why did the Brisa say that it's not Ru'u Yaloi? Because she's an Almanon. Even if she would not have been an almana, tepo klemishum the havabula. Elama, we must be speaking about a case where the kohen gadol raped her shaloi kedarka. And on this, the brayso says umish. One second. Kohen gadol. Doesn't matter. We'll see that later. That a kohen gadol cannot marry a buula from him. In other words, when he marries her, like we learned at the end of yesterday's shir, either by kedushin or by Nesuyan, she needs to be a psula. Clear. We'll see this, we'll see this soon in the, in the Ahmed base. El Olav, Shalei Kedarko. And on this, the Brayse writes that the reason why she's not Ru'u Yaloi is because she's an Almana. Umishum Almana in. But Umishum Bu'ula, Loi. Now what did Rav say, Rav Paskin, that a woman that Nivalo Shalei Kedarko, Rav says she's considered a, a, a Bu'ula. She's not a psula. No, she, so he's not a psula. He's machma like Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon. So the Gemara answers, don't ask a question on Rav. We said that Rav paskins like Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon. And Ha, turning the page, this Braisa, that only considers, considers her disqualified because she is an Almana, that does not consider her Rabbi Ola, can hold like Rabbi Meir. Challenges back to Gemara, that can be Verav the Amar, Verav, Verav the Amar, Kerab Rabbi Lazar. And Rabbi Lazar like Rabbi Lazar asks the Gemara, "I Rabbi Lazar, if he would hold like Rabbi Lazar, that holds a bia shalei kedarka is considered an act of bia, 
which is why she'll be considered the Bu'ula, Ma'iri Mishum Bu'ula. Why would Rav consider her a Bu'ula? And therefore we learn that Rav only learned his din by a Kain Gadol, <clears throat> that if a woman was Nivala Shalei Kedar, because she's still a Kain Gadol, Tepe Kalei Mishum Dahavalei Zaynu. Rav should have actually said his din that if a woman was raped, I'm sorry, if Nivala, Rav's din, Shalei Kedarko, being that if Rav holds like Rabbi Lazar, that's considered an act of Bia, that turns her into a Zaina, and she's prohibited not only to a Kohen Gadol, even to a Kohen Hadid. Now we have to remind ourselves like this, that what makes a woman into a Zaina is really a Machlekas of Tanoim. Rabbi Lazar is the one that's Machna. The Chachamim hold that only when a woman has a relation with a man with whom she's prohibited to get married to, whether she had a relation willingly or not. If she had a relation, by unfortunately, it means if she gets raped, she can get a din of a zayna. Rabbi Lazar is machmer. We don't pass on like Rabbi Lazar. But Rabbi Lazar holds that any act of cohabitation out of wedlock, it means a panoi and a panuya. Being that she had a relation with a man who was not her husband, she's called a zayna. If that is the case, and if Rav holds like Rabbi Lazar, and of course, like the Rishonim point out, just because Rav paskans like Rabbi Lazar in one din, that Shalai Kedark is called Bia, doesn't mean that he has to paskan like Rabbi Lazar on all of the dinim, and a Hanami, but we're going to make it work out, even if he were to hold like Rabbi Lazar on all of the dinim. But let's say Kasha is, if Rav goes according to Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar holds that any act of Bia out of wedlock makes a woman into a Zaina vis-a-vis -vis marrying a Kayin. So then the Rav should have said a much broader din. And when Rav didn't say the words Kain Gadol, but that's what Rav meant. That's what the Rishayim learned. That when Rav says that Niva Allah Shalai Kedar Kapsula he meant Lukain Gadol. Obviously, if it's only to a Kain Gadol, it's because she became a Baula. And Lukhaira, she should also be considered a Zaina. The Ha'amar Rabbi Elazar, the Tana Panui Haba Alapnuya, if it was done Shalai Lushum Ishus. So I said the words out of wedlock, let me just clarify that. If a panay and a panoya have an act of a relation, but their kavana was to get married, that act marries them. But if they're having it not, not to get... For sure. She's married to him. Right. Okay, that's no problem. But we're speaking about the case of Rav. And Avaitar, according to Rabbi Lazar, that should even go to a Bia Sholei Kedarko. Is Asa Zainam, Kashem, So Amr Rabbi Yisif. So Rabbi Yisuf clarifies. Now we're going to go into Azash Tikal Daichik. That when Rav says that Isha Shiniva Lo Shalai Kedarko, she's P'sulah to a Kohen Gadol, we already clarified that we're referring to a Bia Shalai Kedarko. And now we're going further, it's Kogain Shiniva Lo Lebehemo. Speak about a woman who had a relation with the animal. Shalai Kedarko. So now she is a Bu'ula. But she's not a zaina because a, a, a act of bia with an animal is not called an act of bia. And it does not render into a zaina. That's what I was going to ask in a second. The hasam mishum bu'ula ika, as we'll see in a moment, when it comes to the, to, the, to, the, to, to the restriction that he cannot marry a bu'ula, she's a bu'ula. Uh -huh. We're going to compare this to Mukas 8 in a moment, and that's a very good comparison. Going back to the end of the Mishnah, but Abishum Zayna like, even according to Rabbi Lazar. And Abaya, right, what you said, Abaya right away challenges that. Amalei Abaya, my man of Sheikh, Ibu Ula Havia, if the act of Bia with an animal takes away her status of being a virgin, that, that means it was a Maisa Bia, then Zayna Nama Hava. And Vi Zayna Loi Hava, because it's not called Bia, if it's not called Bia, then she's not called a Baula. So the Gemara says, so now the Gemara tells Abai, oh, one second. When the Mishnah said at the end of the Mishnah, what, what type of Mukas Eitz are we speaking about? Are we speaking about the statement that is made by Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon? Or is this statement made according to everyone? So when he is making the statement, we are understanding that that this is only according to Rabbi Lazar. That Rabbi Lazar said he should not marry a begeris and not a woman that was a mukasaitz. Don't forget that Rabbi Lazar was the one that said that even Bia Shaloi Kedarka, Rabbi Lazar is Mahmer, is called a. Yeah, sorry, she is mekel by, by begeris, but he's Mahmer by Shaloi Kedarka. And he says, Lisa's mukasaitz. 
which means Mukas Eid Shaloi Kedarka also makes her into a Ba'ula. So the same thing would be by a Behema. In other words, Mukas Eid, it's not called Bia. She's not called a Zaina. But, but Rabbi Lazar is saying that Lo Yisas Mukas Eid. So Lachayra, it works, and that can be the explanation of Rav. Says the Gemara that no one can hold that a Mukas Eid Shaloi Kedarka. And therefore, likewise, a Bia with a Behema Shaloi Kedarka. Means that 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 a stick. Was, no, mukaseh shaloyka darka means that a stick penetrated her shaloyka darka. And if that makes a woman consider the bu'ula, the Gemara says that no no woman can ever marry a kohen gadol, because in those days when people went to the bathroom, they didn't have toilet paper. What they used to clean themselves was a stone, and then they, they always penetrated a little bit. And that's called a mukaseh shaloyka darka. Ama im kein ein lach ishes kshed alikahuna, meaning lakuna gedayla, because she lenasas mukaseitz al adet zeroid when she goes to the bathroom, when she uses a pebble or a stone, and therefore going back, and therefore it must be that when the Mishnah concluded with the words lo yisas mukaseitz, this goes lekol alma, and we're speaking about a mukaseitz that if the eitz if something went into went in, went into the kedarka went into the place where you have bia. Only there does she con is she not kosher to a oh. koyin gadol. But when it's shalai kedarka, then she's not considered a bu'ula. And if that is the case, the Gemara's question is a good question. If you're telling me that Rav spoke about shenivala lebehema, and we're speaking about shalai kedarka, she should not be considered a bu'ula. Then she should be permitted to be with a koyin gadol. Elama, she had a relation with a person. If she had a relation with a person, again, if Rav will hold like Rabbi, Rabbi Elazar also when he get to the law of Zaina, then why did he say she's only puzzle to a koyin gadol because she's a bu'ula? She should be puzzle to any kind because she's a Zaina. Kasha answers the Gemara. Rav is speaking about the following case. This is Gavaldic. We're looking for a case where a woman is considered a bu'ula, but she's not a zaino. And this is the case. A woman who was married off rabbinically. We're speaking about a minor whose father died, who was married off to another man by her mother or older brother. Another option, we learned this many times together, that if her father is living, her father married her off when she was a minor, and she got divorced or became widowed from that first husband. Now the father no longer has the right to marry her off because Hashem only gave the father the right to marry her off once. But again, Midrabanan, the father could marry her off a second time. It's called a rabbinic marriage. When she's in such a marriage, until she becomes an adult, there's a machlekes, I think we learned this together between Tanoim, does she have to, if she doesn't want to be with her husband, she has to make a declaration, either in front of two people, I'm saying machlekes is some people we learned the three people, and she has to declare, I refuse to be with my husband. She makes a declaration of refusal, mi'un, refuse. When she makes a mi'un, her marriage retroactively becomes nullified. Such a woman is not called a zaino. Because when she was with her husband, she did it in the context of marriage, even though after she did Mion, retroactively her marriage was nullified. But it doesn't make all of the acts of cohabitation with her husband into a Maisa Zunus. She's not called a Zaina. But she's not called a Psula, she's a Bu'ula. Wait, how old is she? She's under 12. Oh, she does Mion. In other words, if she's with her husband after she becomes a Na'ara, 12 years and one day and she begins to, de to develop then she no longer can do me and then her marriage becomes a biblical marriage if she wants out she needs to get a get but it's not retroactive but the case over here when Rav spoke about a woman was that's what he's saying cannot marry a kind of God so he's speaking about a katana who had a rabbinic marriage who was only with her husband why is she not considered a zaina? Because when she was with him, she was then considered married. Now we don't call her a married woman because now, retroactively, she was always an unmarried woman. Rav says, he paskins like Rav Lazar and Rav Shimon, that Bia Shalai Kedarka is called Bia. So even if physically, her, what, what people would call today, her virginity is intact, halachically, she's called a Bula. She lost her virginity because she was with another man. The Bia Shalai Kedarka. Geendikt. That's the meaning of Rav. What about that situation where she was never with her husband? 
Lachayda, based on what we're learning now, again, theoretically, she, she can get married to a Kohen Gadol. Because she's not the Ula, and she's not even married. As long as the husband died. Because if, if for her to marry a Kohen Gadol, she, can't she has to be freed from another man. That means there's two ways, either divorce, or by Mimanis. Correct. Either she's an Almana. No, she can't be an Almana either. What am I talking about? Oh, oh Mimanis. Mimanis. Correct. You know, it, I think they, they gave a case. I mean, Rav spoke about a case. Sophia, she knows, I'll tell you, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense that in those marriages, there was no beer altogether. They were not together. He's a minor. Okay, right. Amar Rav Shimi Barchia. Going back to what we learned before. That Nivahala Libehema. Now, what Rav Shimi is adding, Danny, is that we're speaking about a woman who had Bia Kedarka, if you can call that Kedarka, with an animal. That any act of Bia with the Behema still makes her considered Kesheda Le Kahunam, even a Kain Gadol. And why is that? Because it's Mukaseitz. Because Behema and Mukaseitz is considered the same thing. And Apshimi understands that when the Mishnah concludes Velo Yisas Mukas Eitz, that is not according to everyone. Like we said before, that's only according to Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon. And he, in the other Tanaim, they disagree with it. And he is one of, and he paskins that way. That Nivhala Lebehema Kshayda Likun. And Tanya Nami Hachi. That Nivhala Lemisha Eino Yish. A woman had a relation with, with a non-man, which means with an animal. And, and here, the Braisa points out the irony on one hand, you don't call it a Maisa Bia. You don't call it an act of cohabitation. On the other hand, for a human being to have a, this type of relation with an animal, it's, it's not just a biblical violation. It's a violation that doesn't only carry Qadis, there is Skila. It's a capital crime. That Afa Pisha Beskila, even though on one hand you're Chayiv Skila, on the other hand, it's not called a Maisa Bia to disqualify her from marrying a Koyen. In other words, she's not called a Zaina. Like we learned before, it doesn't have to go together. Ki asa Ravdimi, when Ravdimi came from Eretz Yisrael, Amari said that Maisa Beriva Achas, a story with a young maiden, with a single woman, from a city called Hislu, it's the name of a place, Shehoisa Mechabedes Asabais, that while she was cleaning the floor, she was cleaning the house, Verava Kelev Kufri Me'acharel, that some type of rural, wild dog had a relation with her. Me'acharea means shaloi kedarka. This is important. Okay. And ve'ekshira rebe likahuna. And he says, Rebbe allowed this woman to marry a kayan. Mamash, what we're learning right now, that bia, shaloi kedarka, from an animal, is not called a maisa bia. She did not lose her psulim. Correct, correct, correct. This is Shalai Kedarka. I stand corrected. So he brought it out of Shalai Kedarka. And Shmuel added that when Rebbe allowed her to marry a Kayan, he wasn't only allowing her to marry a normal Kayan. In other words, oh. by saying that it's not a, she's not a Zaina because it's with an animal. But what he meant is what we're learning. Ula Kayan Gadol. No, she's not considered a Ba'ula. And correct. So the story is a story of a Bia. Shalai Kedarka. Rav Shimi, right? Paskind, that even Kedarka, Kshayda Likuhuna. Amalei Rava says, Rava to Rav Dimi, Amalei Rava mi par, mi parzakyo. That's Rava from a place, from Parzakya. Tells Rav Ashi, that mi no ha milsa da Amar Abanan. From where did we learn that ain't Zinus Lebehema, again clarifying, their skila for a person to have a relation with an animal, both on a man and on a woman. But how do we know that that's not called a Zinus? And for example, a married woman, an Aishas Ish, who's Mizana, can no longer be with her husband. So if an Aishas Ish had a relation with an animal, halachically it's not called Zinus, she can still be with her husband, because it says, Leisavi esnan zaino umechir kelav beis Hashem it says in the Torah that if a person paid a zoina by giving her a kosher animal, kosher animal meaning an animal that could be offered as a carbon. So if the zoina has this animal, or if a person bought a dog, and in exchange of the dog, the person didn't give money, the person gave again an animal, a sheep, a shepsala. 
So now the recipient of that Shepsila cannot offer that animal on the Mizbech. Hashem hates those animals. And the wording is a payment for a Zaina or an exchange of a dog. So Vatran, we learned in a Mishnah, that what about if it's the opposite? What happens if you have an Esnan Kelev? What would be the payment of a Kelev? So they explain that if a person paid, if a person paid a Zaina to be with a dog, and the payment he gave her to be with a dog was a sheep. That could be offered as a carbon. If there was a mechir zaina, a mechir zaina means a person who had a slave, whose slave was a zaina, and the person exchanged his slave, who's a zaina, for an animal, for a sheep. That animal could be offered. Oh, it's when the trader says, it's not for the body of the zona, it's for the service. Before we go into the lamb, this, but the, the, no, it's Esnan Zaina and not Esnan Kelev. It's Mechir Kelev and not Mechir Zaina. And they are Mutarim. Why? How do we know that? Because since it says again, Gam Shneim, that these two are prohibited, and the trader adds the word two, we spoke about two, is to teach you Shneim Veloyarba. And now the question is, if a relation with an animal constitutes Zenus, so then the Esnan Kelev is an Esnan Zaino. Means if a person pays a, a Zaino to be with a dog, if that's called a Maisa Bia, then the payment for that is considered an Esnan Zaino. And the fact that we say that that could be offered on the Mizbeach, because it's not an Esnan Zaino, that's because a Maisa, a relation with an animal, is not called a Maisa Bia. It's called an Esnan Kelev, not called an Esnan Zaino. Bishiality is Asr, Isur, Skila, but it's not called a Maisa Bia. Get ended. Now let's go back to something that, was, that you mentioned before. In other words, when the, when the trader says that a Kohen Gadol is not allowed to marry a Bu'ula, it means he cannot even marry a woman who became a Bu'ula because he had a relation with her. Now, Pshita, that according to the Rabbi Lazar, who holds that any woman who had a relation out of wedlock is called a Zaina, Pshita, that a Kohen Gadol cannot marry her if he had a relation with her because she's a Zaina. But according to the Chachamim and the Halacha, that if a Panoi and a Panoi, if the Kohen Gadol is a Panoi, and there's a Jewish woman that's a Panoi, that them being together, even L'Shem Znus, is not called, does not make her into a Zaina. So that's what we're speaking about here. So Tanar Rabbanu, we learned in Abrais, that Anusas Atzmai, Umefutas Atzmai, that if a Kohen Gadol, God forbid, raped a woman, or if a Kohen Gadol, God forbid, seduced a woman, she's no longer a Psula. So the Braise says, Lo Yisa, he should not marry her. However, now these words will be explained in a moment. Ve'im Nasa, but if he married her, Nasui, then the marriage is a marriage. We'll see soon what that means. Does it mean that the marriage is a marriage only La Fuke Rabakiva, who holds that Kedushin is not Chal, when a person is violating a love? There's a love. In other words, but he has to divorce her. Or does it mean that once he married her, since she became a Bu'ula through him, he doesn't even have to divorce her? We'll see soon in a moment. That's number one. Number two, Anusas Chaveira, if there was a woman that, God forbid, was raped by someone other than this Kohen Gadol, or Mefutas Chaveira, or if she was seduced. Bottom line is, she has no more Psulim from someone else. Again, Lo Yisa, the Kohen Gadol is not allowed to marry her. But the Im Nasa, but if he did marry her, here there's a Machlai Kestanoi. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says, so here in Yavamis, when you speak about Rabbi Eliezer, it's Kavanaki, that there's few opinions. In the last few daf, we had many opinions from Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. So Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says, Havlat Cholol, that the child is a Cholol, meaning that if the son is a, is a man, he is no longer qualified to serve Avaida. If the child is a daughter from such a union, then she will not be allowed to marry a Kain. She's called a Cholol. Why? Because they were born from a union of a Kain Gadol and a Bu'ula. Now this was not said on Bu'ula Satsmai. This was only said if she was Nivala through someone else. So there is some type of difference. However, the Chachamim say even more lenient. That even though there was a violation of 
For who Isha Bivisola Yikach, he did not marry a Psula, but it does not make the child into a Chalol or a Chalola. Have a lot kosher. And we're going to see in the Gemara, let's go on the first case and on the second case. So the first case was. We'll see in a moment. We'll see in a moment. So now, Ve'im Nasun Nasui. The first case was that if the coin Gadol is called Anusas Atzmai Umafutas Atzmai, he shouldn't marry her. But if he married her, she's married. So Amar Rav Huna Amar Rav. So Rav Huna explains in the name of Rav that what the, what the Braisa means to say is not that they are allowed to be together. All he means to say is, is that the Kedushan was Chal. But Umaitzi beget. But they have to ask the divorce. So Bar says, Hello, Hadiktani. We learned on the words vi'im nasun nasui. Then on this, Omar Rav Acha Bar Yaakov loimar. That what Rav Acha Bar Yaakov said, he explained that what does the words im nasun nasui means? She'ein mishalem knas. I'm sorry. I ve'el alikoni im nasun nasui. L'chayra the Gemara challenges Rav Rav Huna. It says im nasui nasui, which means they can stay married. So the Lord says it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that they can stay married. They have to get divorced. But if they have to get divorced, then what is the advice telling you in Nasu Nasi? We know we don't pass on like Rabbi Kiva. So Rav Acha Bar Yaakov explains, She ain Mishalem Knas Mimafut. He explains the following. There's a din that if a man seduces a minor, he has to pay her father a, a penalty of 50 shekel if he does not marry her. The man, period. Now, what will happen if the Kongodal was Mafata, this girl? He's not allowed to marry her because she's not a Psula. He has to divorce her. What did the Tana mean when it said, nasui nasui? He has to divorce her, but now he doesn't have to give her the 50 shekel. Or he doesn't have to give her father the 50 shekel. Because the Torah only gave this knas of paying 50 shekel to the family of the girl if he doesn't marry her. Here he married her. I, he married her because she was a Baula, and now the Bezin is forcing him to give a get immediately, doesn't matter, but he married her. So in other words, the Chiddush here would be that the words of the Braisa, V'im Nasa Nasui, doesn't go on both cases, doesn't go on Anusa Satsmai. It only goes on the words, Mefuta Satsmai. In other words, they're both equal, that the Tanakama is saying that even though she's a Baula from him, she's called a Baula, she's not allowed to marry her. But the words, V'im Nasa Nasui, was only been a get to the din of a Mefuta. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rav Geviha. Rav Geviha from the city called Kassel, Mebe Kassel. Omar Lishmaitza Kameid Ravashi. He explained this, this answer that was given to Ravashi, this explanation of the Braisa. Omar Le Ravashi responded, Vahar Rav and Rabbi Yechanan, the Omri Tarvayu, that Boigeres, or a woman that's a Mukas Eitz, Lo Yisa. But the Im. Nasa Nasui. Now over there there is no case of Mefuta. Right? They were saying another thing. That if a woman is a Begeris, the disqualification of a Begeris, as we learned in our Mishnah, she was never with a man. She never had beer with a man. But from her age, her psulam are getting weakened. Or if she, in some other accidental instrument, penetrated her and took away her psulam. So they paskent. Rav and Abiyechen and paskent. That Lachatchili shouldn't marry her. But if they are married, they stay married. L'chayda, the words there, v'im nasi nasi, means it stays married. Alma seifa. Alma seifa liyas begeres tachtov. Seifa liyas mukas eitz tachtov. Hachinami seifa liyas bo'ula tachtov. How can you insist that im nasi nasi means mutziya beget? And the only reason why he said the Chiddush is like we explained from a Futas Atzmai. If the words Nasi Nasi means Mitziya Beget, that's not the meaning of Rav and Abi Echenon. Over there they said, Beget is a Mukasei Tzlo Yisa, Ve'im Nasa Nasui. What they meant over there is they can stay married. You can't give the answer of you, you are exempt of paying the Knas, there's no Mufuta there. There it must mean that way. And just like it means over there, Ve'im Nasui Nasui, so it should mean the same thing over here. The Lord says, Kash, take a question on the meaning of the Brais. And as we keep on learning that whenever there's a word Kasha and not the word Teyufta, that there is an answer. And, it, and, and there is an answer. In other words, it makes a lot of sense to say that 
like he explained, that why is it that a Kohen Gadol who marries a Begedis can stay married to her? Like he explained, because since even if he would marry her when she's a Nara, she would eventually be a Begedis. Same thing with the Mukas Eitz. In other words, Soif Elias Mukas Eitz Tachtov. You allow them to remain married because every Kohen Gadol remains married to a woman who is not a Psula. So the fact that he married her when she was not a Psula, that was taka, not a good thing. That was not a Lachat Chila Dika thing. But now that she's married and she's a Bu'ula, every Kohen Gadol is married to a Bu'ula because he made her into a Bu'ula. So the Ritva says, yeah, but Medvaram Amunim, when what made her into Bu'ula was not an act of debasement, was not an act of zilzal. A begetus is natural. A woman gets older, her psulim gets weaker. A mukase, it's, it, it's, not, it's not something that debases her. A woman having a relation out of wedlock, even with the one who eventually will marry her, is an act of debasement. Which would make sense to say that if the kind Gadol was the one that had a relation with her, even though in marriage he continuously has relations with her, in the marriage his relations with her is a misa of issues. It's a relation in marriage. Having a relation with her before they got married is a debased act. It's a non-kosher act. So it makes sense to say, even though the Braisa uses the same words, nasui, nasui, that over there, where she was, so to say, degraded before she got married, she was less qualified to marry him. And therefore, even though it says, nasui, im nasu, nasui, moitzi a beget, Masha Inkin, if she's a beget, so if she's a mukhaseit, im nasu, nasui, she can remain married to her. Yeah, we'll stop over here.